This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Welcome to the latest edition of Sundays with Dominic and Vito. I am your host, Vito Geronimo Churko, on an Easter Sunday edition of the podcast. And different times and different measures being taken because of the fact that we have the stay-at-home order in the state of Michigan all throughout the state right now and throughout most of the country. Subsequently, Easter Sunday for a lot of us is a lot different too, including for my family and I, and that includes the original co-host of this very podcast in Dominic Churko. He, my dad, and my mom and I are at home at the lovely Delta Resort, as I love to call it, and we are going to still celebrate Easter. We will, and we will be eating a great meal later today, actually. So uh, depending on what time you hear this podcast, the food might have already been consumed, And this evening, it will consist of some great ham and pasta. My mom makes some great homemade pasta sauce. She takes a lot of time, puts a lot of effort and time into it, and it's always, always, always A1. Awesome sauce. And trust me, it's the best. This sauce is legitimately the best, okay? So maybe one day, my mom will share the recipe with me, and then I can share the recipe with all of you out there. But anyways, I digress, as I will be eating that later for Easter, and wish all of you once again a happy Easter to you and your loved ones. And with all of that being said, I want to get into the two interviews, and it's a dual interview on this week's episode of the podcast, as I got the chance this past Saturday to record an interview with Detroit Kings, Jalen Reed, and Tyrone Spencer. Tyrone Spencer, the head coach at Detroit King, Jalen Reed, a four-star, a stud safety, and a class of 2021 prospect who has recently committed to Penn State and actually did so this past Thursday. So it was big news and a big-time positive for Jalen Reed and his family. So obviously, I had to get into why he decided to commit to Penn State. And You know, he had a bunch of other Big Ten schools, including Michigan State, right in his home state that were looking at him. And he decided to join Penn State along with two other PSL players who just committed. And those individuals are the King Twins from Cast Tech, so a rival of Jalen's at Detroit King. And Kalen and Kobe, twin brothers from the class of 2021 that will be joining Jalen Reed at Penn State. Those guys will be seniors this upcoming fall, so they have their fall seasons. Hopefully they will still be able to play this fall too, depending on what happens obviously with the coronavirus pandemic. But if the virus does at least start to wash away, there could be games played and for the aforementioned three individuals as part of their senior campaigns. With all of that being said, Here is now my interview with the Detroit King headman, Tyrone Spencer, and his star class of 2021 safety and a recent Penn State commit, Jalen Reed. Everybody and their mothers probably asked you this question, but I am as well right now. And it's simply, why did you decide to commit to Penn State? I chose Penn State because it's a great fit for me, for me and my family. And it's a great fit for me personally, academic-wise and sports-wise. And it's a um, great school, great atmosphere, great people there, great family. It's a family atmosphere, and I love that. And um, I, I chance of playing early, I play for on a big time level, and um, and it was just the best thing for me and my family. And your next head coach at Penn State will be James Franklin. Now, what did you discuss with him up to this point, and what kind of a relationship do you have so far with Coach Franklin? I got a great relationship with Coach Franklin. He's a good, he's a great, great dude. And a great coach as well. Um, we talk about how I'm going to fit every day. He just talks to me. And a good thing about him, he talks to me personally, just how I am as a person every day. And he could just he could be a friend sometimes, not just a coach. So now you have to go up against in the Big Ten, two schools from your home state of Michigan, NU of M and MSU. What the heck is that going to be like when you have, I know, you know, teammates of yours and in the past that have gone to Michigan, have gone to Michigan State, let's say even, and just people in general 
probably even from your family, right, and friends that root on Michigan and Michigan State. So now that you're going to go up head-to-head against them in the Big Ten, what do you think that's going to be like, Jalen? I think them games are going to be great atmosphere, great games, and uh, I'm just going to battle it out and see who will come out on top. Now to you, Coach Spence. We do have Tyrone Spencer, by the way, the head man at Detroit King with us as well. He's been out with me multiple mm-hmm. times. Always a good guy. I mean, definition of a good man, good head coach. And with that being said, Coach Spence, to bring it into this discussion, what kind of player mm-hmm. is Penn State getting in Jalen Reed? Uh, they're, they're getting a ball hawk, man. They're getting a guy who loves to fly around and get to the football and make plays. Um, I think they're getting a, a really smart football player and uh, – you know, the sky's the limit for as good as he can be, you know, as long as he continues to work hard and uh, and, and continue to just grow like he's been doing, man. They're going to get a – he's going to make some plays uh, down there at Penn State. How about the kind of kid that he is as well? For those that don't know much about Jalen, and from your time coaching him as his head coach at King now, what kind of kid is Penn State getting as well? The, yeah, they're getting a super weird kid. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Now they're now they getting a good guy, though, man, a good kid. You know, um, you know, Jalen Jalen is, is, is not like a perfect kid, but he's great because, you know, with those imperfections, you know, he understands where he needs to uh, grow at. And I think like any coach like values that and and, and loves that, you know, from from young men. And, uh, you know, but he comes from a great family, man. Um, great kid. Uh, somebody that. Uh, one of my favorite guys that I've coached, you know, and, uh, you know, one of the kids that I, I really trust. And it's been – this will be a second year kind of like running the defense for us. Um, so I'm excited about that. And, you know, we got to get on – it's just this stuff, this coronavirus is happening, but we got to, you know, soon get on the same page and try to make sure we can uh, get ready for this season because we got a big game week one against Pinkerton Central. Big time game, big time season coming up. Senior year, it would be for Jalen Reed. But want to also bring this up. Now, Coach, you brought up imperfections, how Jalen has some imperfections. But everybody does at a young age and throughout their whole entire lives, right? Nobody's perfect. For sure. Back to Jalen now. When you think about yourself and what kind of man you are on and off the field right now, Jalen, what kind of things do you think you have to work on moving forward, both on the field to get better, but also off the field moving forward? Um, I know I, I know personally I have to work on controlling my emotions and uh controlling my emotion and controlling my attitude when bad situations happen. And uh, what would you like to accomplish at Penn State? Um I wanna get a degree. One of my biggest things I wanna win the Jim Thorpe Award as a DB, I wanna win the Jim Thorpe Award and uh I just wanna be a playmaker and just help my family out and get a degree. And speaking of playmakers, now there's two dudes from Cast Tech, twin brothers, Kalen and Kobe King, who have just committed as well from the class of 2021. Rivals mm-hmm. in the PSL going to be joining you now at Penn State, Jalen. Now, talk about how cool that is going to be for you guys right now as rivals to one day now play with each other in college at Penn State. I mean, yeah, that's a cool thing that we're going to be playing with each other. But we're rivals right now because the season for the start, but – well, it's going to it's going to we're going to be good. We're going to be good teammates. They're both good players. They both they both good players on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, we're going to have a good time together. What is your relationship with the King Twins right now? I mean, we don't we talk as much cuz we just can both our two of us just committed to Penn State, but like like during the season and stuff, we don't really talk that much cuz family rivals. And you have to be. I mean, you leave it all out on the field and you're true yeah. And I love that about Cast Tech and King. And back to you, Coach, about those King Twins committing, along with Jalen now, the two mm-hmm. rival best teams in the PSL, kind of coming in unison now, coming together because you got these kids and these stud athletes in the class of 2021 all going to Penn State, a you know dominant power, yeah. great school in the Big Ten. Can you talk about what that means now to the PSL as a whole, you think, and to the city of Detroit as well? Yeah, I think it's great, man. I think um, I think those guys are really good football players. And, uh, you know, when, when you start thinking about, you know, what that Penn State defense could look like in the years to come, uh, you know, Enzo Jennings is down there right now, um, you know, another kid from the area. And then you add these three guys, and it's no t- isn't, you know, there's no telling who else may enter the fold here at Penn State. Um, you know, it, it's going to be very interesting to see um, – and like I said, man, I think those guys, uh, 
definitely are going to make an impact on that defense. And operating, you know, during these different times, tough times economically, you name it, socially, emotionally, physically for everybody, having to be locked up indoors and self-isolating. What has it been like for you, Coach Spencer, dealing with all of this craziness with the coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's not the ideal situation. And um, it's just, but it's something that, that that's what we're, going up against right now and it's something to deal with and we got to learn how to adjust and and um learn some patience and learn some uh learn how to sit and value our time with our family you know so i, I try to take the good out of it you know and you know even though it's not what i would want to be doing right now um got to take the good out of this thing and 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 hopefully uh the, my kids are my players are doing the same thing um and uh you know, hoping that they're still working out and doing things to keep them busy and, 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 and studying. But at the same time, man, make sure they're safe and just, you know, being being the best that they can be right now, given this current situation. Well, you have to stay safe, right? And healthy as much as possible. I yeah. mean, those are the two major priorities right now. And so hopefully everybody is, and with your guys' respective families and friends. And speaking of football and your players now, Coach Spencer, yeah. How have you kept up, you know, kept in contact with those guys despite now the social distancing? Yeah, we've just been uh we, we got a group chat and I'll I'll just do some wellness checks just to to make sure everybody's good. You know, I want to check on the kids and make sure that nobody on the team had it or um you know update them on, on anything that we have as, as far as our king family goes. And uh, you know, that's how we've been communicating. I know the, the kids been uh they got their own group chat. Um, I know some of them have been uh, FaceTiming our other coaches. And so, you know, being able to use the technology that we have and, and uh, meeting up and then soon what I want to do is um, is probably get some sort of uh, either use the Zoom format or something and we're, we'll start to try to just keep their minds fresh mentally, maybe do some chalk talk and stuff like that. And uh, you were going to coach track at Detroit King this right. year as well. So how about communicating with those individuals and how has that just been so different for you now without having the season, without being able to coach your track athletes this year? At yeah, it, yeah, that was, that was rough. Cause I was looking forward to that. Uh, most of the, uh, honestly, probably 90% of the guys were football guys. Um, so you're talking about like a handful of guys who just came out to run track by itself. So for most of them we've been in touch with, uh, but yeah, man, it's hard not, not to have that track season. Guys were going to get better from track and get faster. So now we just got to hope that they're they're still doing some type of squats, push-ups, running a little bit so they can keep some muscle um, so they can keep some of that speed and hopefully they don't lose any of that. So, uh, But I feel like we're not at a disadvantage because everybody in the country is going through this right now. So, um, you know, like I said, it's just something that we just have to deal with. And speaking of staying active, I mean, what is the key to that now for your athletes, for your football players, your track athletes? You kind of brought it up regarding track and doing squats and other exercises. But what have yeah. you advised your football players to do to stay active despite this coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, just um, just the same thing, man. Like push-ups are key. I remember coming up, my head coach, um, Coach Reynolds, always talked about Herschel Walker and how Herschel Walker always did push-ups and sit-ups, you know, Um and, you know, that's key, push-ups, sit-ups. Uh, so you definitely want to do some core work every day. Um, I try to tell them run a mile if they can every day. And, um, you know, just – just we've also done stuff in the uh, – in our football class or sports class where we would do some yoga, some type of stretches. So I, I just hope that they take everything that we've done and kind of remembered it and have added some of that stuff. Uh, you know, whatever it is from the split squats that we do, you know, every, every workout that we do with weights, you just do it with no weights or you do it with, you know, some books or you do it with maybe you only got dumbbells or, you know, you just do more reps. So hopefully they kind of took the stuff that we're, we've been doing. Well, and hopefully they are. Hopefully they're staying active and doing something and, and yep. maybe running a mile, but Hey, we got Jalen Reed on the line, one of your players. So, Got to ask you, Jalen, what are you doing to stay active? Are you running a mile, doing anything, at least that Coach Spencer just brought up, to stay active? No, I'm, I'm not running a mile, but I'm doing this stuff indoor, though. It's crazy that he just said that, but, like, in uh, football class, we do some, these uh, little 
stretches with our hips, and I've been doing that every day to make sure I could just stay, my hips can stay fluid while, while we off. I've been doing push-ups and sit-ups and a little dips. But I, I know I know for a fact I do push-ups and sit-ups every day, and then I do the little stretches with my hips. That How many like push-ups and sit-ups a day then, Jalen? Like, I do like a deck of cards with the push-ups, and I do like 100 sit-ups. I do a deck of cards with the push-ups, though. So that's been part of quarantining for you. How about everything else you've been doing, uh, quarantining-wise, being at home, not going to school? Can you talk about that a little bit as well? Um, well, this is a good time with your family and get tighter with your family. I've been doing a lot of family stuff with my mom and my and my uh, my uncle. And being a uh, regular 17-year-old kid, playing video games sometimes, most of, most of the time, and uh, yeah. What video games then, too? Because you hear about so many of them that the kids, you know, teenagers like you play nowadays, such as Fortnite, uh, maybe NBA 2K or Madden. How about yourself? I play Madden, two, NBA 2K, Fortnite, Call of Duty, uh, and GTA. Grand Theft Auto. You do it all, man. So how good are you at these games? I mean, what's your favorite one, and what are you the best at of those video games that you just named off? Madden and Fortnite. Madden and Fortnite. Coach, what do you have to say about that? These kids nowadays playing Fortnite. I mean, a lot of them are. I don't know if you've ever seen it or played it, but it seems like a lot of guys from high school to high school throughout the state and throughout the country, I think throughout the world truly, are playing Fortnite nowadays too. Yeah, you know, not really into it. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but, um, you know, that man, that's what they do, and I hear so much about it. Um, you know, I was always, when I used to play games, I was always into like the Madden or the, um, you know, college football games back when they used to have those. So, um, like, I don't know what stuff they into now. But, uh, you know, if they were my – I mean, right now it's kind of cool to do it. So, because they're, in, they're in, uh, in the house. And, I, you know, I wish I did right now. I wish I did have a, a game system because I would try to play some of them guys right now. I was about to say you would have to take them on. But you did admit here you did play Madden back in the day, you're saying, correct? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, I did, man. And then I just – I just stopped having time for it. You know, I didn't have a lot of time. And so I kind of got rid of the Xbox. But, but um, before, oh, yeah, I was a big gamer, too, with, with Madden and college football. Never was a big 2K guy, but um, more, more the football sports. Okay. And Madden's fun. There's a tournament now being put on through Legacy and, you know, Justin Sassante's lead foundation. So pretty cool to see again some kids to sign up for that. And Madden is always fun. And now for me – on a personal note here, I used to love playing with the Tampa Bay Bucks when they had some really good guys there. Keyshawn Johnson, uh, you know, Brad Johnson at quarterback. They had so many good – Warren Sapp, uh, Derek Brooks. So that was my team, kind of dating myself a little bit and some guys that have been out of the league for a while now. But how about for you, Coach Spence? How about for you when it comes to uh, the team that you used to play within Madden a lot, when you did play Madden? Let's see. It, it depended on the year, but – uh um, let me see here. It was a couple teams. I was big on uh, the Saints. I was a big Saints guy um, when they had the uh, the the big receiver. Um, Joe Horn. I'm trying to think. Col- uh, Marquise Colston. Uh, Colston, you're talking about uh, Drew Brees. Colston a great and, at one point. Yep. Yeah. And, and that year that they had uh, Joe Horn and them, like I used them when they had Deuce. Was it Deuce Staley and all those guys? Mm-hmm. Like. I used to use them then too. So the Saints was always because they I could spread guys out, throw the ball around. Um, you know, I think Jonathan Jonathan Vilma was on one of those teams. Um, so yeah, it was it was fun playing with those Saints. That was one of my favorite teams to use. And I think Deuce McAllister actually was the guy that you're thinking of, right? That was Deuce, I think. Deuce, Deuce really played with the Eagles, yeah, yeah. if I'm not mistaken here. So I mean, both really good dudes um, and fun to play with too. Yeah, 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 yep. And so you love the Saints. How about you right now, Jalen? When you play Madden, what is your team to play with? I play with the I play with the Eagles, the Ravens, and the Patriots. Okay, and now out of those three, which team do you play with the most often? The Ravens or the Eagles. Okay, so you like Lamar Jackson. How about the Eagles? Who do you like there? I mean, you like Carson Wentz then too, obviously. No, I would I imagine. Like, I just like the Eagles defense. Now, what do you like about the Ravens then? Back to the Ravens and playing with them. I would imagine playing with Lamar Jackson and Madden is like a cheat code, like Mike Vick used to be back in the day too. Uh, I like Yeah, Lamar Jackson fun, but I like Mark Ingram and Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is the one of the fastest receivers in the field right now. 
oh my God, a lot of speed on that team right now on the offensive side of the ball, no doubt. But yeah. now with that being said, Jalen, to move on to this now, not to keep you guys for too much longer, just a couple of last questions really. And for you, Jalen, right now, who is one player in the NFL that you really idolize and kind of try to mold your game after? No doubt, Jamal Adams. And now what do you like about his game? His physicality, his versatility, he can play any. He could play any position on the field, except for corner, obviously, but he comes from strong safety, free safety, down the linebacker, outside linebacker. He can rush out the edge. That's what I really try to analyze my game after. So you see yourself and some of yourself and your qualities in Jamal Adams at the next level? Yes. Well, hey, one day you might be there after your playing days at Penn State, but hopefully you ball out there first and foremost, do a lot of stuff, accumulate a lot of impressive accolades, and I bet you will, Jalen. And good luck to you with that. For you, Coach Bench, I'll leave you with this. If football weren't to yep. happen, unfortunately, this fall because of the coronavirus pandemic, how big of a, a killer would that be for King in the community, in high school football at large, throughout the state of Michigan? Yeah, it'll, it'll be a huge blow um, for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, one, you know, football is is – one of the favorite sports here in this country, and everybody definitely wants to see football be played. Um, you know, just from the standpoint of students and scholarships and kids trying to go to school, like that, that'll be a huge blow for some guys. You know, some guys didn't get the junior film they needed, or um, maybe they wanted to get more film. Maybe they would have had a better year and could have, you know, had a better situation. So it'll just be rough, man. Um, I wouldn't want to see that. I wouldn't want to see that. I wouldn't want to see like school, like not being there. Cause we got to give these kids something to do. Like they have to like do something. And, um, you know, they, right now, I mean, I think they're doing a great job of sitting around right now, but in a minute, man, it's about to get chaotic. Like if they can't start getting around and moving around. And, um, so, you know, we're going to have to, I don't know, we got to figure this thing out, but I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we will have a season. Um, you know, I'm just hoping for the best, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can get back out there sometime this summer. Let's keep hoping for it, right? Hoping for the best. And keep having yeah. that faith, right? The faith in humanity and this virus washing away. And in a football season happening this fall. I mean, who wouldn't want that yep. to be the case? Everybody would love to see it happen. I think there's still, hey, there's still a possibility, and we hope it does occur. And Coach and Jalen, yeah. with that being said, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy Easter to both of you guys as well. You too. Thank you. Happy Easter. And thanks to Coach Spencer and Jalen Reed for all the time on this week's edition of Sundays with Dominic and Vito. Once again, happy Easter to all of you out there celebrating Easter today. I hope it uh, went well or will be going well, depending on when you're listening to this podcast once again. And have a great week coming up as well. And continue, please continue to stay indoors and stay safe. Guys, with that being said, adios.